Okay, uh, are we in? Okay, uh, Assalamualaikum and a very good morning to all our viewers. Uh, thank you for joining me uh, in the Distinguished Lecture Series uh, organized by the Faculty of Engineering UTM. Uh, I am Abdullah Sani, a graduate student uh, in, from Saitama University and also a junior researcher at National Institute for Material Science uh, located in Tsukuba, Japan. And I will be the moderator for today's session. Uh, okay, in this uh, 36th uh, lecture, uh, we are pleased to welcome our, our speaker from the land of the rising sun, uh, Professor Kondo from Osaka University. But before we proceed, uh, my humble request to all the viewers uh, to like and share uh, this session uh, through the Facebook so that more people could be benefited uh, from this uh, sharing. Okay, so uh, me and Professor Kondo, we have a very uh, long history uh, back in 2011 uh, he was my uh, supervisor uh, when i was uh, doing my undergraduate study in osaka japan uh, and uh, after uh, i would you know uh, proudly say that he's the one who introduced me uh, to this uh, materials field and also after i graduate i joined uh, industry for three years and after that, I joined UTM for my master degree, uh, uh, supervised by Prof. Uh, Esa Hamza. And surprise, surprise, Prof. Esa Hamza. Uh, actually, she was uh, initiating a collaboration with Prof. Kondo at that time. And uh, uh, that's how uh, we got connected uh, with uh, uh, UTM and also uh, uh, Osaka University. Uh, specifically uh, the condo lab uh, in uh, JWRI. So uh, without uh, further delay, uh, I would like to invite our uh, respected Dean of uh, Faculty of Engineering, uh, Prof Rafiq, to briefly reach the uh, biography of Prof Kondo. So. <laughs> Thank you, Abdullah Sani. Right. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hello, welcome everyone. Welcome to our 36th UTM Engineering Distinguished Lecture Series. My name is Muhammad Rafiq and I am the Dean of Engineering University Technology Malaysia. Today, it is my utmost pleasure to welcome Professor Katsuyoshi Kondo from Osaka University, Japan. A bit about our distinguished presenter today. Professor Katsuyoshi Kondo received his PhD degree in welding engineering from Osaka University, Japan in 1998. His undergraduate education was received at the same university from April 1982 to March 1986. And he got an MS degree in welding engineering from also the same university in 1988. He worked in Sumitomo Electric Industries from 1988 to 2000. And since February 2000, he was an associate professor at the University of Tokyo until March 2006. He is a professor of joining and welding research institute JWRI of Osaka University and a vice executive director in charge of global engagement at Osaka University. He is an invited professor at Xi'an University of Technology, China from April 2019. Professor Kondo's current research interests related to three aspects in material science. The first one is in high performance powder metallurgy materials and processing, including additive manufacturing. The second one is in high strengthened dissimilar bonded light materials, such as metal to metal and metal to plastic. And the third one is in manufacturing of amorphous porous silica materials with high purity originated from rice husks. He has published around 330 journal papers patent applications around 130, and plenary keynote and invited international conference presentations around 50. He is also the editorial board member of many journals related to material science and engineering field. So that is a brief biography of our distinguished speaker. Here now is Professor Katsuyoshi Kondo. 
from Osaka University, Japan, with his talk on advanced materials innovation, saving the earth. Professor Kondo, over to you. Thanks so much. Uh, thank you so much, uh, very kind introduction, Professor uh, Rafik, and also the uh, thanks for a good introduction by Dr. Sani. So good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Katsuyoshi Kondo from Osaka University, Japan. Uh, I'm very happy to have uh, a talk today, and also the hope the, uh, you will enjoy my talk. And of course, after the, my talk, so please do not hesitate to uh, ask me anything regarding just the, uh, my talk. Uh, regarding the private, after that, everyone welcome to me. Okay, I quickly change my slides. Okay, can you see that? Yes, yes, we can see. Okay, thanks. So I just really start my talk. The title is the uh, Advanced Materials Innovation, Saving the Earth. Okay, first of all, I just show the uh, acknowledgement for this, the uh, research works. First one, the uh, financial support by mainly the Japan government. The, we have uh, four financial supporting funding projects. And of course, the, uh, we have a very good, excellent collaborator in this research project. As shown here, the, uh, many the professors and the uh, postdoc and the uh, students or spend uh, much time to complete this study in the only in Japan and also from uh, Australia, RMIT, Royal Melbourne Institute of Technologies, or uh, Xi'an University of Technology, or uh, Northwestern Polytechnic University in China. In particular, in my laboratory, the uh, Sean Hears, assistant professor Abdullah Bahadur, he is very good research workers and the, uh, has a good talent. He was graduated from the uh, UTM. I'm very happy to have a talk today uh, at the uh, UTM. The, uh, and also, this is a very good chance for us to accelerate the uh, good collaboration with uh, many members of uh, UTM. OK, so I briefly introduced the uh, backgrounds of my talk. So it is well known that the CO2 gas is one of the uh, uh, greenhouse gas. So that causes the uh, global warming. For example, as shown in these figures, the uh, gradually, gradually temperature increase in the earth. So that causes the uh, very serious uh, problems in the world. For example, this is very famous one, Arctic ice melting. So that melting causes the others problems. For example, the sea levels gradually rising in the world. This is very famous news in Tuval. The sea levels suddenly rise up and the, uh, the citizen in the islands is uh, faced the very serious problems just now. And in Japan, we have much rain last month. So the uh, such rain, heavy rains causes a very, very also serious problems. Not only of course in Japan, in China, in the world, we have the very same the problems due to the heavy rains. So of course, what causes the uh, like this the global warming? Main reason is the CO2 gas emissions. This is well known fact. So I briefly showed that the uh, very fundamental data regarding the uh, CO2 gas emission in the world in 2017. In the world, total CO2 gas is 32.8 billion tons. Most amount of the CO2 gas is coming from China and second from USA. 
In Japan, unfortunately, we have 3.4% of the total CO2 gas. So, but anyway, you know, as the industry developing, of course, CO2 gas emission gradually increase. So that one is the uh, some data in Japan, the which sector causes the uh, CO2 gas emission. For example, shown in this here, industrial sector. For example, the steel making or concrete products, these two factors are the main, main in the uh, industrial sector. But for the next, focus on transportation sector. For example, the passenger's cars gives us the uh, CO2 gas. Of course, not only the uh, passenger's cars, trucks, airplanes, the motorbikes, any transportation sectors causes the uh, large amount of CO2 gas emissions. So the important point is have to reduce CO2 gas in cars. Of course, to improve uh, fuel emission, this is the best way to reduce the uh, CO2 gas. So, but from viewpoint of material science, we will suggest few methods to reduce the CO2 gas emissions. Okay, first of all, I just showed the uh, very famous the uh, data relationship between fuel efficiency and the passenger's car's weight. As shown here, with decrease in weight of the passenger's cars, fuel efficiency gradually increase. So that means the high fuel efficiency causes the CO2 gas emission. As a result, we believe the reduction of passengers' car weight must reduce the CO2 gas emission. We're based on this idea, of course, not only for passengers' cars, for aircraft. Of course, aircraft weight should be reduced to reduce the uh, CO2 gas emission. For example, this is the Boeing 777 flight. This is very famous flight developed in 1990. The fuel efficiency shown here is 0 0.075 kilometer per liter. In that case, gasoline. The weight is the maximum is about 350 ton including the uh, 250 passengers. However, after that, the uh, 2008 Boeing 787 flight was developed. This is very, very light aircraft. The maximum weight is 250 tons, of course, including the uh, 250 passengers. As a result, fuel efficiency of this aircraft is about 0 0.12 kilometer per liter. So that means about 60% uh, improvement in fuel efficiency by lightweight technology from 350 tons to 250 tons, about 100, 100 tons weight reduction. So what causes like this uh, large weight reduction? According to this graph, you can see that until Boeing 777 flight, the mainly aluminum alloy is used in the uh, bodies and wings. The mainly the 70 to 80% combustion rate ratio of the uh, aircraft. However, in Boeing 787 flight, we can see that new materials, CFRP, carbon fiber reinforced polymers, 
about 50% combustion ratio is achieved. So by using the CFR keys materials, we successfully reduce the weight of the aircraft about 100 tons. So what is the uh, CFRP, carbon fiber reinforced polymers? As shown here, matrix materials is polymer, and the reinforcement is carbon fiber. So that one is one of the cross of for very, very ultra light and strong used for passengers, cars, and for aircraft, and so on. So compared to the other industrial materials, like a steel or aluminum, regarding the first of all, density shown here, carbon or CFRP materials is quite right compared to two materials. And regarding the mechanical properties, for example, specific tensile strengths, of course, CFRP is show the very large strengths and also show the very large Young's modulus compared to steel and aluminum. So that means the, when we use the CFRP materials to structures materials, for aircraft or passengers' cars, of course, they can reduce the weight of their body itself under the high safety due to the high strength and high Yang's modulus. For example, shown here, as I mentioned, aircraft body is used by CFRPs and power wind generators shown here. This is the uh, CO, CFRP materials. And recently, the uh, BMW developed a new electric passenger cars, for example, in shown here, i3. So, you know, well, the uh, body is the uh, based on CFRP materials. Shown here, two guys easily bring up the bodies. Of course, shown here, they are gentlemen, not supermen. So even for two passengers, two, two gentlemen can bring up. So that means very, very light bodies of, uh, made of uh, CFRP materials. But anyway, so focus on this graph again. You notice Focus on these pink cars, marks. This one is the titanium materials. Until 347 flight aircraft, titanium usage ratio is less than 10%. However, in case of CFRP materials, the ratio is over 20% for titanium. So why? Why is there such a amount of uh, titanium can be used in the uh, Boeing 787 use of uh, CFR materials? So that is the reason shown here. For example, the carbon fiber reinforced polymers has very high electrical conductivity due to the uh, carbon fibers. However, if the carbon fiber materials contact to aluminum materials, aluminum is the, uh, unfortunately, has a very poor corrosion resistance. At the interface, they have an electrical circle and CFRP should be the cathode and aluminum be our anode. So the, due to the uh, electric circles, the difference of uh, electric charge causes the uh, very large and severe galvanic corrosion in 
aluminum side. So when the uh, CFE materials used in some construction materials, the metal materials should be having the uh, high corrosion resistance to reduce the uh, corrosion resistance behaviors. So as I'm, once again, I show that high corrosion resistance right metals is necessary for use of uh, CFRP materials in construction parts or components. Okay, in that case, we focus on titanium because titanium has very excellent corrosion resistance and high strength. Shown in this graph, the one is strength. Titanium has very high strength compared to stainless steel or nickel alloys. And this one is corrosion rate in salt water compared to two metals. Titanium alloys has very low corrosion rate. That means no corrosion phenomenon in salt water over titanium materials. So for example, in these photos, that one is the shown here, a runway at Haneda International Airport in Japan. Focus on these pillars. This pillar is covered with the titanium steel to improve uh, high reliability and uh, there are uh, durabilities for over 100 years. So because, as I mentioned, titanium has very good corrosion resistance and also very high strength. So by covering the titanium, the uh, seat, this concrete materials has very high durability and reliability in the seawater. Okay, I compare the world products of industrial metals, like steel, aluminum, copper, and titanium. Now, as you know that uh, steel, aluminum, and copper is belonging to the common metals because they have a very large amount of uh, products in the world. However, titanium is uh, quite small amount of production in the world. So we must call them as their metal. So why so small amount of uh, production of titanium in the world? This is very simple. Titanium is very expensive. For example, steel is about 0.1 US dollars per kg. However, titanium is over 100 US dollars per kg. So usually most people use the steel instead of titanium alloys. That means very special in very special cases, titanium alloys should be, must be used in such case. So why is the titanium expensive? Of course, pure titanium is not so expensive. However, as shown in this graph, I'm sorry. So titanium has a very low strength compared to titanium alloys. So to improve the uh, strength of pure titaniums, we must add it iron elements in that case, shown here, very expensive rare metals must be added to improve the uh, strength of pure titanium. For example, shown here, vanadium, niobium, tantalum, or zirconium. Of course, as a result, shown here, titanium alloys shows a very high strength with low density. 
However, titanium alloys are very, very expensive. So that is our motivation in this research. To develop new alloy design for high strength titanium with cost benefit. That means cheap element should be used as iron element to improve our strengths. In our research, we select shown here, oxygen, nitrogen, carbon, hydrogen, iron, silicon, and so on. We call the ubiquitous elements. These elements are, you know, very cheap. So by using like these ubiquitous elements, titanium alloys cost is acceptable as common metals. Of course, previous research by other researchers tried to use like this cheap element to increase the uh, strengths or mechanical properties. However, unfortunately, they failed in their development. For example, in casting, traditional process, in casting process, they added point about 6 weight percent oxygen content into titanium. In such case, shown in this EPMA results, so this one is agglomeration of oxygen atoms at the some grains or at the some grain boundaries. So like this oxygen agglomeration causes the uh, brittleness of titanium materials. For example, this one is a tensile test result uh, shown in the stress strain curves of these cast materials with increase in the uh, strengths suddenly strain decrease. So that means breakage due to the uh, brittle performance of uh, high concentration of oxygen atoms. So based on these results, we use the uh, powder metallurgy technology in solid state, non-melting. That is quite different from conventional casting process. Powder metallurgy process is very simple. For example, as shown here, titanium powder, this is for matrix materials. TiO2 rutile particles, this is origin for oxygen additions. By mixing of two powders and pressing and sintering in vacuum conditions, this TiO2 completely dissolved and oxygen atoms diffuse into titanium. And we will obtain titanium materials with uniform distribution of oxygen atoms. For example, right side, I show that the uh, SEM photos, this is just sintering at 800 degrees C. So this fine particle is TiO2, rutile particles. And this is large one is titanium powder, powder. At the interface, you can see TiO2 reacted with titanium powder from here and during the sintering at, for example, 800 degrees C, TiO2 particles decompose and oxygen atoms originated from TiO2 diffuse into titanium powder and completely solute into the alpha titanium grains. So this is very simple a process to obtain the titanium materials with high concentration of oxygen atoms. Of course, the uh, not only for the oxygen, but other elements, nitrogen, silicon, 
carbon and so on. We will uh, do the uh, prediction of uh, element selection by materials informatics. In our, in our research, mainly our first principles calculations is applied to predict how much the strength improvement could be obtained by adding elements by the uh, solid solution strengthening behaviors. For example, our uh, right side, I show that in case of titanium oxygen combination, titanium atoms exist as interstitial solution atoms between titanium atoms shown here. As a result, the oxygen interstitial atoms causes their lattice expansion in the alpha titanium grains, crystals. As a result, the lattice expansion causes the uh, strain, large strains around the uh, crystal. And finally, we will successfully obtain the uh, strength improvement. So in that case, the first principle calculation method is a very effective to estimate the uh, which element is uh, suitable or effective to improve our strengths or mechanical properties of titanium alloys. But anyway, based on this, the results, uh, we prepare the titanium with about 0.6% oxygen atoms uh, included materials by powder metallurgy process, PM process in solid state. So compared to the cast materials performance, we can see that in the stress strain curves, how the metallurgy material shows like this, very high strengths and very good strain, good ductilities compared to cast materials. But this is mainly due to the uh, oxygen atoms uniformly distributed in the uh, alpha titanium grains. So for example, right side, with increase in the oxygen content, UTS and yield stress gradually increase. And of course, elongation ductilities show the uh, constant values. That means the uh, very enough ductilities is kept in titanium alloys with high concentration of oxygen atoms. So as uh, probably you understand that powder metallurgy process has a very large possibility to improve for titanium materials performance by using, by using the uh, ubiquitous elements. Another example is in case of titanium with oxygen and iron, like these tannery alloys. Of course, you know, titanium uh, iron powder is very, very cheap. In that case, we mix with titanium powder, iron particle, and titanium dioxide particles. Three kinds of a powder are premixed and pressed and sintered, and plastic deformation was applied. And as shown in this strength strain curves, red line is titanium, iron, oxygen, ternary alloys. They showed very high strengths and very good strain ductilities compared to titanium 6-4, 6 aluminum 4 vanadium alloys. This is very famous titanium alloys used for aircraft. As compared to both, our developed materials showed much higher and much larger strengths and ductilities. So that means very good balance between high strengths and high ductilities. So that one has a very high reliability used in the uh, construction materials for aircraft or passengers' cars. So based on these results, 
we apply to these uh, material design to 3D, metal 3D printings. In that case, we use the selective laser melting process we call SLM process. Oh, this is well known the process and uh, powder serving on the uh, building up stage and laser apply to the uh, metal powders and by irradiation laser for powders the powder melt and the uh, between the powders melting melt powders they completely combine and quickly solidified and layer by layers applying and finally we will obtain the three dimensional parts for example for right side the actual parts in the case door hinge used in the uh, airbus a380 titanium alloys and that one is a fuel nozzle used in the boeing 737, 737 max unfortunately this craft is not is not operated. The uh, parts is made of uh, nickel alloys produced by General, Elec uh, General Electric Corporation. But anyways, so like these uh, components completely fabricated by metal 3D printing SRM process. So in our research, for example, uh, once again, we use titanium powder with TiO2 particles. The one is the starting materials. And after melting, we will obtain like this simple shape parts and evaluate the microstructures and the mechanical properties of the uh, titanium materials with high oxygen concentration. Okay, for example, the, this one is the uh, microstructures. Compared to casting process, once again, SRM process shows a very, very uniform solution of oxygen atoms in the matrix. And compared to the cast process materials. And due to like this uniform solution of oxygen atoms, of course, causes the improvement of uh, strength of titanium materials. For example, as shown here, left side, this one is pure titanium. And this, this force contains titanium dioxide particles with increase in titanium dioxide particles content, that means with increase in the oxygen content, strengthening behaviors gradually occurs. That means we will obtain higher tensile strength and higher yield stress by oxygen solutions of 3D printing materials. Compared to the other materials like uh, powder metallurgy process materials and casting process materials under the almost the same level of oxygen content, about 0 0.5 to 0.6%. Compared to powder metallurgy process materials, SRM, mat SRM materials shows the higher yield strength. This is due to the uh, hard ways of a molten site, but they showed a little bit decrease of uh, elongation strain, uh, strain uh, ductilities, but close to the 20%, that one is enough used for structural materials. But anyway, the, like this data show that 3D, pro, 3D printing process, in particular, SRM process, has a large possibility to improve the uh, mechanical properties of titanium materials using the uh, ubiquitous elements like uh, oxygen, 
or nitrogen elements. In the case, the uh, regarding the oxygen content, uh, oxygen additional materials, the, my students, uh, Miss Ichikawa, uh, spend much time to actually uh, improve the uh, strengths and the uh, dexterities of these materials. I am thanks for her very nice these studies. Okay, I briefly uh, just show the uh, uh, summaries of my talk. Uh, shown here, is, this one is banana curves between the strengths and elongation dexterities. The star marks developed by in my laboratories of titanium alloys using the uh, ubiquitous elements. Of course, all materials has the fine microstructures and some effective solid solution elements. As a result, they show the very high strengths and high dexterities compared to the uh, conventional titanium materials and alloys. And in such, the titanium materials is applied to the uh, uh, aircraft or automotive passenger cars. Of course, they effectively reduce the uh, CO2 gas emissions. And as a result, we can save the earth in future. Okay, very much thanks for your kind attention. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much for the very nice talk, uh, Professor Kondo. So uh, we are now uh, open for all the viewers to actually ask uh, any question regarding uh, the talk that we have uh, listened for the last 40 minutes. So uh, let me check on the comments. So anyone who have the, oh yeah, there is. Okay, there is one question from mm -hmm. one of the viewers. Uh, could you give some comments on the advantage of CFRP at CFRPs as compared to graphene or TMDC's materials? Okay, so that is a uh, question, right? Yeah, question, yeah, question. I just read oh. out question. Okay. Yeah, you, you can see the, the, the written question. Is it visible to your well, screen? Wait a moment. Which is the uh, questions? Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, okay, some comments are advantage of CRP compared to the graphene. Oh, okay, good, 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 good. Okay, so uh, we have uh, some, how to say, the uh, experimental data mm -hmm. of uh, reinforced with the graphene or carbon nanotubes compared to the CFRPs. Of course, if we successfully uniformly disperse of graphene or carbon nanotubes, so of course the materials shows the very high uh, mechanical performance compared to CFRPs. But you know the uh, uniform distribution of uh, nanoscale reinforcement is uh, very difficult. So of course, if uh, once again I we successfully distribute the graphene or carbon nanotubes in the matrix, we successfully obtain the high performance, like uh, mechanical strengths compared to CFRPs. Okay, okay. So there is also another question uh, asked by the same person. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I think... Mm. How we can change this? Oh, one. okay. So I just read out the question from the Facebook. Mm -hmm. uh, I could I couldn't see in this uh, browser. So, do you compare your mm. materials with other advanced materials mm -hmm. like uh, uh, graphene? Mm -hmm. or is it the same? Oh yeah, this one. Yeah. yeah. Oh, is it the same question? Sorry. Oh, yeah. And, oh, and first, he asked about the advantage. Yeah. And second, he asked about the comparison. I think it's almost the same. Eh? 
almost the same, but uh, unfortunately, mm. we have no experience in use of uh, molybdenum uh, sulfide or tungsten sulfide, but mm -hmm. uh, we successfully dispersed the graphene mm -hmm. in titanium materials. But oh. uh, in case of graphene, mm -hmm. you know, they easily react with the titanium matrix oh. to, form, to form titanium carbide. <laughs> so unfortunately, the um, performance of uh, high performance of graphene cannot be cannot be applied. Uh, cannot be that's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, there is another question from yep. one viewer, Abdul Khalik. Uh, wonderful, wonderful talk, Prof Kondo. Thanks. Increase O two more than zero point six percent. What happened to overall strength of titanium alloys? Okay, mm -hmm. increase uh, zero more than 0 0.5, or 0 0.6. Okay, okay. So um, we have uh, our data until point about point 0.9 or something percent. Mm -hmm. Over no. point 0.9 or 1 percent oxygen content, ductility decrease. Okay. That the decrease because the uh, uh, slip system change oh, okay. of uh, alpha titaniums. As a result, unfortunately, the uh, elongation ductilities suddenly decrease. Okay. So, uh, I see. So, trade off, huh? So, the slip system change and ductility drop off if we further increase the oxygen. Okay. Yes, uh, there is another question. We have a few questions. Uh, any biggest dif any uh, biggest difference commercial and titanium materials for SLM as compared to you modification TiO2 materials usage? Mm, okay. Okay. So the uh, commercial means the yeah, company. Mm. For as compared to your question, ah, commercial. I think commercial TI and probably commercial means the titanium, commercial titanium alloys. Yeah, commercial titanium. I think we have shown the data. Is it just now? Probably yes. Okay, under this the uh, uh, questions. Yeah. As I mentioned that the uh, for example, the uh, commercial Ti six four shows the uh, good balance between the uh, strength and ductility. However, SRM titanium with oxygen materials shows a similar or higher strength and higher ductility at room temperatures. But Type 64 has a good thermal resistance. That means high temperature properties, but titanium with Oxygen materials has not enough high temperature properties. Oh. So for improvement of high performance at the elevated temperatures, we must select instead of uh, oxygen, we must select the iron, for example. Iron addition causes the uh, improvement of uh, tensile properties at elevated temperatures. Mm -hmm. OK. so. Can I have? Can I ask question? Yes, please. <laughs> uh, how about? Uh, I mean, uh, we are talking about the strengthening of the materials, is it? So there is also some effect, I think, for the grain size. Yeah. Yeah. How do we? Uh, I mean, compare without mm. uh, with excluding the effect of the grain size. Yeah. Okay, that depends on the uh, iron uh, elements. Okay. So, for example, the uh, uh, I show that titanium with oxygen content. In that case, okay. the uh, are completely alpha titanium materials, alpha single alpha titanium. So the strength factor, main strength factor, is grain size and oxygen solution content and texture. And uh, under the same process, the texture effect almost the same. Okay. So that uh, both 
depend on the grain size of oxygen content. Mm -hmm. With increase in the oxygen content, of course, oxygen source solution behaviors is the dominant. Oh, okay. Right? So, and, okay. but a small amount of uh, oxygen content, of course, you know, the fine grains due to the uh, rapid certification in SRM is a dominant. I see. So thank you. Uh, uh, OK, there is also another question. Uh, yeah. I just wonder about the stability of your material. Could you give some comment on that? OK. On yeah, Amir. Stability means the uh, elevated temperature, right? Stability. High temperature? He just mentioned in general, maybe um, elevated. I'll say the creep, maybe creep. I th ah. I'm not sure. Yeah, creep? maybe. Um, yeah, because uh, in, in in very general, maybe okay. creep, creep performance. Unfortunately, we unfortunately we have never evaluated the creep resistance at this moment. Mm -hmm. But uh, I just finished the uh, evaluation of uh, static tensile and dynamic by. Uh, fatigue test. Of course, yeah. fatigue properties shows the uh, higher compared to Thai 6 4 alloys, conventional Thai 6 4 alloys. For example, I just show the uh, data. This is the, uh, for example, I'm um, sorry. Can you hear me? That yeah. one is the uh, titanium oxygen solution materials. And this is Thai 6 Ball. Oh, the uh, uh, Mianai is. Yes. Mianai, no? Yes, no, no, cannot see. Can you see that? No? No. Just oh. me and you, the face. I think, yeah. Share? I think share. Oh, yeah. Now we are coming. Yeah. How is there that? Is. Oh, yeah. Now we can see. Okay. Oh. Ah. We can see that. No, red one, red one I, is there. In, in Facebook, but they cannot see. Uh, wait, cannot see, yeah. In the Facebook, it's not shown. Uh, can we have a little help here? Oh, yeah, now, now we can, yeah, we, we can see now, yeah, from Facebook. Okay, how is that? How is that? Yeah, 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 we can see okay. now. So, the red one is the titanium oxygen, and the blue oh. one is the titanium 64. All right, and this one is the fatigue test results. Red mark is the Thai uh, of titanium oxygen, and the blue uh, black one is uh, Thai six four. So we understand the higher uh, fatigue strength of Thai titanium with oxygen, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And basically, we will obtain the titanium iron oxygen that show the cross to the uh, eight hundred megapascal mm. at the uh, fatigue limit. So that is a quite large. Compared to Thai 6 4. Mm, but see. anyway, the unfortunately at this moment we have no evaluation of uh, our creep resistance. Okay. Thank you. So, yeah, can we go to another question? Is there any question? Uh, next question. I think there is one question. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, from Dr. Norhashima. May I, yeah. May I know why after graphene is combined with TiO2, why the good performance of graphene can't be extracted as you mentioned just now? What does it mean? Uh, Mm. Graphene, Saki, no? Uh, mm. Just now, I think we mentioned that. Okay. Maybe you okay. can explain uh, a little bit. Yes, more. of course. That one is the gra uh, when we use the uh, graphing, uh, we must uh, need the severe temperature control to prevent the uh, reaction between graphene and titanium matrix. Mm. As I mentioned, Graphene very easily react with titanium matrix to form TIC. 
So when we use the, for example, 700 or 750 degrees C, such temperatures is suitable for reinforcement as graphene into titanium matrix. Mm. In such case, probably we will obtain the high strengths, uh, high strength improvement by graphene. However, TiO2 in such case never dissolve. So in such case, we cannot obtain the uh, oxygen solution solution strengthening behaviors in 700 degrees C or 750 degrees C sintering. Mm -hmm. I see. So mostly with the reaction between graphene and titanium to becoming titanium uh, carbide, right? Yes. So uh, last question, because we have uh, we have very limited time. <laughs> so last question from mm -hmm. Dr. Akmal Fadil. Okay, for titanium sheet coating, mm -hmm concrete structures submerged in seawater, are they also protected by cathodic protection or other oh. corrosion protection? This is more about corrosion. Yes, that's right. So but one, this one is a very, how to say, the simple ideas in the uh, concrete material, concrete pillar coated with titanium. So as shown here, uh, cathodic protection is mainly is mainly reason. But another one is, you know, the concrete materials has a porous structures. Oh. So the, uh, the, of course, the pillar contains the, the uh, steel, the uh, uh, fiber, and the steel, the uh, 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 reinforcement inside. So due to the uh, coating by titanium, uh, how to say, the sheet, they completely protect the uh, coming the uh, salt water into the uh, concrete yes. materials through the porous structures. So I see. So uh, thank you very much, Prof uh, Kondo, because uh, mm -hmm. we are <laughs> currently uh, we we will close on the question. So if any of the viewers still have question, maybe we can communicate later, maybe through emails or mm -hmm. what means so okay uh for this we are uh, from utm uh from uh, faculty of engineering we uh would like to express our gratitude uh, to you for joining us for this uh, session uh, and also uh giving us a wonderful outputs and new knowledge so we hope that in future we could uh work on this uh, project more and uh again, promotes the cooperation between utm also with uh, Osaka University, especially mm -hmm. your. Okay, uh, any words from you? <laughs> yeah. Last uh, words for, for the young researchers yes. who are joining us uh, in this session. We have 126, 25 viewers now. Okay, so yeah. always we welcome the uh, any researchers who want to research works with my lab. So uh, anytime, welcome to my lab. And uh, of course, Please send me the, uh, any questions by email directly. Welcome. Oh, today, very, very thanks for kind attention. Thanks so much. Oh, today, we have Prof. Rafik now joining us. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sani, uh, for, uh, for chairing the session and for introducing Professor Kondo to me. And to Professor Katsuyoshi Kondo, arigato gozaimasu. Thanks so much. <laughs> arigato gozaimasu. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye -bye. See you. See you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.